Hello, selectors, and welcome to the Burning or the Curiosity Diva. Burning Curiosity Diva. Uh, we're talking about the deck lists now. We're doing all the deck lists for all the new L rigs. These are the ones that you can get in the packs, and we're talking about Nova Destiny Imperial. And as you guys know, I love me Nova. Nova is my favorite. So it hurts me to say that. This deck, I think, is pretty borderline. I think it's average. I don't think it's amazing as much as I'd like it to be. It's not the Nova of yesteryear, is what I'll say. But it's an okay Nova. Let's dive into what it does. It's a level 3 white Elrig uh, that says that auto, whenever this Elrig attacks, you may put a card underneath this Elrig to the its owner's trash. If you do, you put a target card from your trash to the top of your deck. So you're generally going to be able to do this three times, but a game of Cross doesn't really go longer than turn five, sometimes turn six. So if it goes to turn six, you end up using all of its uses, but yeah, for what's worth, it's basically infinity. <laughs> you'll be able to do it three times after you go to level three. You'll be lucky if you can do it twice. Um, it's enter abilities. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Put one card on the top of your deck and the rest on the bottom in any order. Then it's got the once a game action ability where you can put target white signy from your trash to the top of your deck at the end of your turn, draw two cards. So, here's what you're going to be doing with this Elrig. 90% uh, of the time, you will be putting this uh, into your your uh, your deck into play. You're going to look at the top three cards, you're going to decide which of those cards is the best. Sometimes you're going to be basically looking for a guard on the top of those. You'll put the guard on the top. If not, you'll probably put some kind of lane opener onto the top, right? That's, generally speaking, or Nexia, what you're going to be doing. Um, the rest of it is going to be going to the bottom. Then what you'll do is you'll immediately use your actions once a game ability. This will then let you put an Exia, which is probably what you're grabbing, onto the top of your deck. You will then do the attack phase timing where you'll go ahead and ex you'll go ahead and uh, put part of this L rig into your L rig trash, like level one or whatever. Um, and then you'll grab a guard from your trash and you'll put it on the top of your deck. Then at the end of your turn, you will draw two cards. One of those will be a guard. Um, and you will now have something that you can set up for next turn. And you also have a guard to guard this turn with. The following turn, you will then draw your two cards at the beginning of your turn. Uh, one of those will probably be a guard or will be a way to open up a lane, and then you'll be able to attack through. That's basically your turn three, turn four plan with this deck. Um, the thing that I don't love about this new Nova is its lack of immediacy, because after this, it really goes downhill. Luckily, We Cross is probably a turn four, turn five game, which means that you're going to be proactively trying to set up the top of your deck to have the best cards that you possibly can pull from it. You're not going to do an ultimate defense with this type of deck. You are definitely still going to try to play mid-range. And with that, let's go ahead and look at what the L-Rig, or what this deck ends up being. Uh, again, we're going to be using Cockatrice to go over the cards, especially the ones that are in Japanese, so you won't be able to see the uh, English on the card text, but you can always see the English if you look at the bottom of the, the uh, screen. Um, we're going to pair this deck with Machina, and we're also going to pair it with Akino. Um, my reasoning for pairing it with Akino is that I want access to a guard, right? I want, I'm, I'm going to be milling myself quite a bit because I want to use its, um, its attack trigger as best I can, and that means having a pretty good toolbox in the trash. Um, and remember, you can get any card with its ability. You can get spells, you can get um, a, uh, you can get yourself uh, guards, and more importantly, you can get white cards and black cards. So the reason why I'm using Akino here is I just want a constant access of of guards, right? I, I this is a more defensive mid range deck than you you really would expect it to be. You could turn the screws, make it do move a little quicker, and if you did, the Akino pr should probably be a Ange. Uh, in order to get yourself a version of White Heaven. You'll see that we have White Heaven already in the piece, but if you need to just put more damage out there, Ange is another great way to do it. Um, the Akino that we're choosing is Akino Rock, which bounces something to the hand, and then Akino Bye Bye, like I said, it helps us get a guard, and it also returns something to hand. It's got attack phase timing. The other choice that we've got is we're going to be using Machina. We're going to be using Machina... Wing Slash and Machina Smash. As you guys may know, this is basically the choice 
uh, Machina that we'll be using. It's basically, if you want to tech in black and your deck is a mid-range deck, this is this is the greatest way to tech it in. You get yourself a uh, level 1 back to your hand, which can matter a lot because the level 1 has a fair amount of board presence cards. Those are cards that are like, or sorry, cards that are 7,000 powered or higher um, in order to stave off things like Lancelock attacks or Hera attacks. And then Smash allows you to get back probably an Exia out of your trash, replay it, um, and then keep your board solid. Your other while being removal on both these ends, right? And we do need a fair amount of removal. So Akino's removal, Akino's removal, Makino's removal, Makino's removal. And then we're running uh, White Heaven, which is also removal. Um, so we're pairing a lot of removal in the main deck. The other um, piece that we're playing is Super Helestia Saber. Now, Super Helestia Saber in set zero was a pretty okay card, just because it got back a card. In set one, set two... It stopped being all that great just because there wasn't a ton of really good options to pull out of your trash. Um, nowadays, it's pretty simple what you're pulling out. You're choosing an Exia with the white, and you're also going to choose a guard. And then for the black, you're going to choose something that can open up a lane. Um, generally speaking, that's what you're going to be going for. There's very few black in this deck, but that doesn't to say that there isn't any amount of black in this deck. Um, and... As, of course, you're going to be choosing things like you've got Baphomet in there on the lower end, and if you wanted to tech in some more lane-opening removal spells, you could do stuff like, for example, um, the Eresh in order to open up lanes, especially because you're conserving your own life total, to blow it out if it ends the game for you. Um, but the Phalaris is another big one to, to be using, especially because the deck is going to go a little longer game that you might want to do that. And then, of course, there's Dark Energies as, a, as another option that you can choose. There's a lot of tech uh, black cards that you could pop in there if you'd really like to. Um, moving right along into the actual deck itself. This is not part of it. This is just something I imported wrong. Um, we'll go right into the deck itself. Um, I think we're actually supposed to have a full set of this. Um, okay, cool. So we start out with the level fours. Um, what we're doing is we're going to be using the Baphomet, because again, if you play Baphomet on your turn one, you got to pair it up with another Baphomet in order to get yourself uh, the ability to have a 7,000 power on your field. But there's plenty of other 7 powers, or things that are immune to Lancelots, Ramels, etc. Um, and that is going to come in the form of this new card, uh, Tayoki, Tuyuki. Tikeoki. I'll learn how to pronounce it, don't you worry. It's just got a very cool constant ability, which is if your center Elrig is white, this gets plus 5,000 power during your opponent's turn. Um, that means it's 8,000 power, by the way. It's not 7,000. The difference between 7,000 and 8,000 is not really that huge, other than it sometimes can survive a Baphomet swing. Um, but this is actually a very good thing to cast on turn 1 and turn 2, just because you've, you're going to be able to gum up the field really well with this. Um, and then you've got a Zhao. Now, Zhao's don't survive everything, but survive a lot of things on the early turns um, and actually become a little bit more valuable later down the line, too. Basically, you're just making your turn one presence be really hard to kill. Um, you have access to removal in your Elrig deck, so you don't really care too much about having a ton of removal in your main deck. You're letting your Elrig deck do most of the heavy lifting for you, and you're just basically using your main deck to be... Uh, a solid jockeying for board position type of uh, deck. Now, moving along into our, our level twos, we've got two ant nests here. Um, the two ant nests are good to stop assassins. They're not amazing, but they're good tech cards, and you could definitely go ahead and use them and grab them off of your uh, Super Celestia Saber, or even sometimes your uh, Machina Wing, or your Machina Smash, in order to uh, get yourself a way to defend against the opponent's um, aggressive attacks. Of course, you're playing the four full uh, Exia, just because this makes life a lot harder to work with. Um, and that's your level three. Your level two slots, again, you're going to be running the Ishikiri Maru. Again, a 12,000 on level two is really just really, really hard to deal with. Um, plus, it gives you the filtering effect, which is always pretty good, and its life burst is quite strong. Uh, but we're going to be using a new card here, which is that we're going to be using um, a card that is also... Not just a 12,000 on your opponent's turn, but it is also, um, <laughs> it's also just a 14,000 
Uh, sorry, 12,000 in this deck altogether. This gets a, this Signy, it's a level 2, gets a constant plus 2,000 power for each white Elrig on your field. Since you're going to have 2 in there, this will get up to that 12,000, which we're looking to get it to. Its life burst is also pretty fantastic, where you'll be able, if it has 2 or more Elrigs, white Elrigs on your field, which you do, you can target 1 Signy on your opponent's field with power 10,000, it's big, or low, and return it to your opponent's hand. Um, this ends up being a very, very strong piece, something that even the original Nova was pretty much lacking, because this life burst is energy denying and also pretty all-encompassing. 10,000 hits a lot of targets on the, L the, uh, the life burst end. Um, most level 2s, some level 3s, pretty much all level 1s. So it's going to be a very, very strong life burst to have in there. Of course, you've got your 4 servants, just because they are quite good on their own. Um, and then the other level threes that we're running is we're going to run a few blue whalerins. You're going to have some extra cards in hands because you are drawing some extra cards with your options, stuff like Super Alessia Saber. And a good thing that you can do to turn them into just raw um, removal is just go ahead and discard them to your blue whalerin. Of course, we can't run a ton, but we can run a few in this. And since you are ending the turn with a cards in your hand, this will at least get the power boost off of those types of effects. So, this doesn't attack with the buff, but at the end of your turn when you do draw your one cards or your two cards, you will end up having the extra boost in there. Um, we've got a Phalaris, because Phalaris is just a good way to win longer games, especially against decks that are milling themselves so greedily, which a ton do. Um, we've got some Hanges here, and these cards are really good to pair with Exia. So you put Exia in one lane, you put this in the, the center lane, and then you can put something like your 8,000 there, right? And your 8,000 plus 3,000 power is going to end up at 11,000, so it's going to be quite strong. Or, you know, you put it with your level 2s that are 12,000s, and you've got yourself a whole team that's basically 15k. That's pretty unvanishable, guys. Um, unless the opponent's playing uh, some form of assassin or is playing green removal-based things, but green's all not super great, so you should be pretty okay there. And then when it comes to our spells, we're running two Anna Mirages. Um, again, not as exactly a spell, but kind of a spell. Um, it ends up being a pretty okay wall on your opponent's turn, but you're mainly using it as a way to get more clock in. Again, your Super Celestia Saber can pick this up, and that's a prime target for it in order to just do more removal. Um... And then the last spell is Rapid Accumulation. So I very rarely like Rapid Accumulation, but I do like it in the MC Lion deck where you're trying to basically make your deck more gas. Um, it's just a way to make your deck smaller so that way you can combo off easier. Um, but I also like it here because with Rapid Accumulation, you will be able to uh, use this on your L-Rig. And then you can you can exceed if you really want to. There's no other real exceed costs here, so why not get something extra out of it? Probably the Enter Charge would be my guess. Um, but you also will get the ability when this Elrig attacks, you can draw a card, which means that in combination with uh, Nova's ability, you can get back your guard immediately. Um, and that's something that's worth mentioning is that Nova 1.0 struggled because it wanted to do its it wanted to get its Elrig out early so that it can do its get guards immediately on turn three, but it also wanted to be a longer game deck and blowing out your assist L rigs immediately does not help you get there. Rapid accumulation means that with a rapid accumulation and this new Nova, you're basically just doing a better job than the original Nova at getting back guards. But that's why it's in the deck. Otherwise, it's just a little bit of error. You can use it immediately if you need to, just because you need to get action the next turn, and it's perfectly reasonable to do so. Um, so while I'm not super, super high on this uh, Nova deck, it's definitely something that you can surprise people at, and people won't really know exactly what you're doing with the deck. So go ahead and run this in your locals, especially if you're a Nova stan, and s see what results you get with it. There might be a better version of this deck out there, and I think you can refine the Silver Bullets a lot more than I have refined there, especially to do some anti-meta stuff, as long as you're trying to be proactive, I think. If you're being very, very defensive with this deck, I don't think you'll be super successful. It is a very, um, because of the delayed nature return of getting your card that you're choosing on your next turn, because you put it at the top of your deck, it ends up being a situation where you have to pick generically good cards so that way they're still good when it comes back around to your turn. Um, 
So you want a proactive defense or a proactive aggro aggressiveness, maybe not aggro is the word for it, but proactive uh, combat strategy. And that's something that you can do with this deck. So tell me what silver bullets you think would fit well here, what you're excited about or what you want to try with this Nova deck. And as always, keep subscribed because we're going to have more of the Curiosity Diva deck lists coming soon.